Some guys over up here with a quick guide for Priest Healer for WoW Season of Discovery Phase 1. This guide is gonna be PvE focused, I don't PvP at all. Also here we're not gonna go into min-maxing your character, getting the best gear, this is more on the casual side. This is mostly gonna be useful for people who do not want to spend too much time, uh, yet wanna complete the content. So currently for Phase 1 the level cap is 25. Leveling is quite a bit different from usual leveling on WoW Classic for the Priest because pretty much right from the start once you hit level 2 you can get the quest uh, at your uh, class trainer that will give you the first rune. And this rune is going to be penance and you're going to be using it all the way up to level 25 and pretty much I always use this rune uh, for healing. This is pretty powerful ability for leveling as well with only 12 second cooldown. You can just throw a penance, throw shadow ward pain on the mob and then just wand. And on top of that you're gonna discover another DPS rune pretty fast that's gonna be Void Plague. It's discovered around level like 5 to 8 and I will uh, link uh, the dock with all the runes. So you can check this one, this is a comprehensive uh, guide on the wow head where you can find uh, all the runes, the locations and obviously the requirements. But if you follow the general route of the leveling you will discover this rune by yourself, it just drops from the mobs. So this is basically another dot. So you can either apply two dots or you can apply one dot and just one. And as usual for once you can just buy on the auction house a lesser magic wand, it's for level 5 plus, and then from 13 you can use greater magic wand. First one that you want to pick up is going to be spirit tap, it's going to greatly increase your mana regeneration after you kill the mob, so it's overall one of the best level and talents uh, early on, and I would also pick up one spec from the uh, disc tree, this is just straight up 25% increase in your wand damage, also decent throughout uh, your leveling. Rest of the talents honestly doesn't matter, I would just also get heal on focus at the time you start running dungeons. And speaking of dungeons in general I would suggest start running dungeons as soon as possible for multiple reasons. First of all there are tons of people doing quests so in general questing is gonna be slower than usual. Then there are no lockouts on dungeons so you can just like spam run dungeons all over and over again. And you can start doing that if you hoard probably at level like 12 or 13, you can start running the dungeon uh, under the Orgrimmar. And if you are alliance, probably around, I mean, if you're healing, you can get in that mind starting from like 15. Then you're gonna start acquiring good items right away that you're actually gonna be using at level 25. Uh, oh shit. Dude, I don't need the buffs, but okay. Thank you very much. What the fuck do you want? Ah, he wants to, okay, he wants to refresh his buff durations, fair enough. Also, if you don't know how meditations work, I have a very short video on the channel about that. You can check this out, but going back to the topic. Dead Mines, Wailing Caverns, and Shadowfane Keep. This is your bread and butter for acquiring good solid items for level 25. And they probably, you're not probably gonna get it in like several runs, you're gonna be running those again and again uh, in order to get decent gear. So the earlier you start, actually the less runs you'll have to do at level 25. Uh, I'm personally, when I hit 25, I already got the majority of the items I wanted. And the last reason is actually gold, because once you hit level 25, you are essentially max level. And so all the experience from the quests is getting automatically converted to the gold. So for example, if you're level 25, you go do level 20 quests, you're gonna get around one gold for completing the quest. If you do level... 24, 25 quest, you get around like one gold, 60 silver or something. So it's very efficient way uh, to get the gold. Speaking about professions, obviously the best profession is gonna be engineering because you can use different stuff, like you can use grenades, for example, 
This is mainly used in PvP, some uses gonna be uh, in PvE. You have target dummies, and in general there are cases where it can help you to avoid the pipe. And also you need a helm. And at level 25, there are not too many helms that you can equip. So actually the engineering goggles is your best option in terms of like time consumption. You don't have to make them yourself, you can buy them on auction house, they are very cheap. And to finish with the topic of leveling, I want to cover one rune that is very useful when you're leveling. And in general, it's a very good rune, but the problem is it also comes in the same slot where the Prayer of Mending is, and Prayer of Mending your goal to heal. We're gonna talk a bit later about it, but in general, how this rune works. It's called Hamunculi, and it will give you the ability to summon Hamunculi. Uh, it has two minute cooldown, but Homunculi themselves, they also live for two minutes if, unless they are killed. So how this works? If you press this on a mob, it will summon three small dudes that will start attacking your target. Now the damage is pretty much, I mean it's very small. However, uh, every guy puts, thank you brother, it puts its own debuff on the target. Oh, for crying out loud. There you go. So it's like having the pocket warrior with the demo shout, thunder clap, and thunder armor. But the problem is when they are already active, you cannot control them and they are sort of uh, on their own in terms of behavior. Previously, it was a bit ridiculous because the attack range was four yards. Now it's a bit better, like if I pull this boar, I kite this back, there you go, they starting to attack him. So it's a bit better, if they're not attacking, you're probably not close enough. Again, these guys are great, debuffs are great, but in most situations, especially if you're pugging, you're probably not going to be using this rune because you need prayer of mending. Okay, now we're going to move back to abilities. What is our kit? First of all, we have stamina buff, obviously, and this thing at level 25 is insane value. It's a third level of uh, fortitude. It gives base 20 stamina. I chose 26 stamina for me because I have the talent, but even 20 stamina, this is 200 health. Most players come into BFD, they have like, if they're not tanks, obviously, they have like 800 HP. So plus 200 HP is huge. In my case, plus 260, even better. Obviously, you have Inner Fire rank 2, should always be on yourself for additional um, armor. You can dispel magic, you can cure diseases, all that is uh, present. Okay, so regarding healing, uh, you have Renew. The max possible rank is rank 3. In this case, uh, you have Flash Heal only rank 1, so it's not going to be healing that much, and you have a heal. And obviously you have penance, and you have, let me swap it back, you have prayer of mending. Now what actually happens in SOD, prayer of mending and penance are so powerful and so mana efficient, then your normal heals, in comparison, they're not great at all. So in my case, for example, when I checked around like 80 to 85 percent of healing actually coming from prayer of mending and penance because like for example flash heal and heal i only use if i need to heal more and renew i mainly use the proking mechanism for the prayer of mending now we're gonna come back to that a little bit later now let's check the talents uh so for the, so for the talents obviously you have 16 points now i would say use them how you see fit the only thing I would definitely take is heal and focus to avoid as many interrupting on your heals as possible. But other than that, I can see you going for holy abilities. I'm personally going into the disc tree. Because you're using your normal healing abilities so little, then I don't see much point in like these abilities in holy. I even, in case of renew, I don't use rank 3 renew, I, I use rank 2 and I'm actually sometimes I feel like I should be switching to rank 1 to just use it at, as proken mechanism for prayer of mending. Also I forgot about the shield, of course you have the shield, but the shield it's not very efficient. So I don't use it 
too often. Sometimes I use it in like critical situations or I appreciate someone. But in general, I don't use that often. So, so in my case, I run these talents in disk tree. So I have two points in heal and focus from holy and then disk tree. Once back, because unbreakable will, it's pretty much only for PvP, I don't PvP. If you PvP, definitely unbreakable will instead of one spec. But I personally want a lot. I find that 25% is a nice increase, especially if you have a good wand. Then improved fortitude, that's basically extra 60 HP for everybody who you buff your fortitude on. Then you kind of have to go with improved power shield, I guess. Here I'm only going for the meditation for extra mana regen while casting. Uh, and for inner focus, this is basically your free heal once every three minutes. You can just press inner focus, press heal and save yourself 205 mana. And speaking of mana, obviously mana potion is going to be your best consumables. These are pretty pricey currently. One costs around like 90 silver. Uh, but if you do in BFD, this is tremendous value because in bfd if you plug in fights are pretty long so it's usually like three plus minutes so you can chug two of these potions per fight and one potion on average gives you 520 mana two potions more than thousand mana for me that's more than 50 percent of my mana pool extra throughout the fight this is huge but going back to the talents here again run as you like i don't see any reason any specific build being the matter here because again you you don't really use uh, your normal healing abilities way too much again this is for pve for pvp should be completely different and you should not be watching this guide. Now moving on to runes, as you can see, I haven't unlocked even all the runes because I don't feel the need to do that. Apart from chest runes really, because as you can see for chest, I only have two DPS runes and there are two healing runes. However, if we check these healing runes, so for healing on the chest, we have either serendipity and another rune is strength of the soul. It will allow you to use your shield more often, but again, I don't see a point of that in PvE. And going back to Serendipity, what it does basically after flash heal, uh, the cast time of the heal is reduced by 20% per stack. Now it's usually gonna be just one stack because you're probably not gonna be spamming flash heal unless you wanna completely deplete your mana in like 10 seconds. So the only use really for me comes in in the situations where I need to put more healing on the target so for example, I already casted penance and I need more healing right now, then it's a good idea to throw one flash heal and on top of that, the regular heal. But that's only if you need healing ASAP because what you're actually doing, you're just shrugging off 0.6 seconds of casting time of your heal. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about prayer of mending. This is your best skill probably here. So it has 10 second cooldown. So when you cast it, it doesn't heal the target by itself. It just stays there on the target for 30 seconds. But next time the target is being healed or takes damage, it will heal them for 150 if you're level 25. Keep in mind that both Penance and Prayer of Mending, they scale with your level. That's also one of the reasons that makes them so powerful. They always scale to max level. So it heals for 150 and then it jumps on a different target. So what I observed, it prioritizes the target with not full HP. So if you have two targets, for example, in your group or in your raid with less, with not full HP, it can like jump between them, healing them. But you need something to proc. Like if it's on the tank, obviously tank constantly taking damage and constantly it procs. If it's not on the tank, if you have like, um, if you have like a DPS and they took the damage and you want to heal them up, but new damage is not coming, you need something to proc. This is where I find that using renew is very good. And this is why I use rank two or rank one renew, because mainly it's not for healing from the renew itself, it's for proking your prayer of mending. So you can apply the renew and when prayer of mending is applied to that target or it jumps on that target, it will heal them on the next tick of the renew. 
and keep jumping. So if you get 100% of healing from Prayer of Mending, this is 5 heals, 150 each. So in total, this is 750 healing for 74 mana. Now, compare it with anything else of your normal heals. Like your most efficient heal is heal. 205 mana, it heals for like 460 on average. That's not even close. Like anything else from your normal heals, not even close. Penance, also very good efficiency because it heals 171 three times. It has like three ticks, three bolts. So it heals for 500 plus in total and also costs only 79 mana. Again, compared to the mana cost of the heal. That's why the rune heals are way too OP compared to your normal heals. So again, going back to the prayer of mending, you can utilize your renew as a proccing mechanism for prayer of mending. In general, use rank one or rank two at most. Obviously, it's a bit more convenient in raids where usually multiple targets take damage. So prayer of mending in BFD is insanely good. But even in the dungeon, especially with the warlocks, if you have a good warlock who knows how to tap, this is like golden. Because you have like your tank constantly taking damage and then you have Warlock. And what you can do, you can apply Renew to your Warlock or maybe both. I actually usually apply it to both, Tank and the Warlock. And you just put Prayer of Mending on them and it just jumps, jumps between them constantly. But in conclusion, Prayer of Mending is extremely powerful and you should be using that on CD effectively and obviously alongside your penance. Now let's finish up with the gear. Again, this is not your pre-bees or bees list. This is just some easy stuff that you can acquire uh, in the dungeons mostly. That's gonna be enough for you to clear the content of phase one. For the head, we get engineering goggles. These will require, depending on which one you pick, uh, I think it's 100, 120, or 150 NG skill. They don't require level, it's only NG skill. So once you level up your NG, you can use them. Again, you don't have to craft them yourself, so you can just buy them of the auction house. For the weapon, you can get this stuff if you're on the horde. Uh, this is the stuff from Wailing Caverns uh, questline. If you are on the lines, you have a different stuff, but it's also good from the Deadmines quest. From Deadmines, you could get good ring. There is also this stuff that drops from the bosses in the Deadmines. Uh, obviously, Cookie drops insane wand, probably the best BOP wand uh, from these dungeons, all the way up to Shadow Fang Keep. In Welling Caverns, even more loot, you can get an awesome ring, never dropped for me. I did like, actually, one dropped, I didn't roll it. I did, I think, eight runs of Welling Caverns, pretty much got no loot from it. If you go to Fa Shadow Fang Keep, after that, it's a high level dungeon, there is way more awesome loot here. You can get Arugal, Rob of Arugal from the last boss. You can get Belt of Arugal from the last boss. Uh, and you also get shoulders. So these are great and very accessible. Because if you take last boss, for example, there are only three items. And the dagger has way lower drop chance than uh, chest and waist. And for other slots, I'm just personally using greens because that they are good enough. You can just buy them off the auction house again uh, with the gold you get from the quest. So maybe you're selling some mats. Now, obviously you can go extra step and enchant, but low level enchants, they're not particularly good, but still they matter. Like for example, staff here have plus three intellect. In general, it's like a couple of stats here and there. So obviously they help, but again, I would not consider them mandatory. Yeah, so that's gonna be it for this guide. It went a little bit longer than I wanted to be honest, but that's okay. I'm personally done with the SOD. I'm not enjoying it way too much. I'm going back to the hardcore and I will be making uh, more guides on the dungeons there. I have already footage for like four dungeons prepared. I just need to roll it out. Uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.